The 747 heads east over the Atlantic Ocean. Its storage, its storage compartment is filled with 11 large crates. Each crate is occupied by a large African elephant. They are sedated. Some are lying on their sides. They are hungry. Their destination and destiny is to be held in captivity in small zoos in Tampa and San Diego for the rest of, for the rest of their natural lives. 50 hours ago, they were extracted from their home in Swaziland. The Makaya Reserve is a small square of land in South Africa. The total area of the Makaya Reserve is about equal to the tip of South Florida from Orlando to Miami. <coughs> to, the, to the righteous, it is a ri large river of freedom that flows through the wild and allows animals to live in harmony with nature. In reality, it is a small square of land that is inadequate for the number of herds of wild animals that are being forced to live there by the uh, scourge of human development. Their appetites drive them to strip the leaves and the limbs from the trees. Right now, in 2012, over half of the Makaya Reservation looks like a desolate, barren, bizarre moonscape. It's, a, it's very unfortunate that the numbers of animals cannot, cannot be sur, uh, survived in this type of environment. But as humans, we do a great job on making sure that things are manageable. With the aid of big game hunters and poachers, we work on culling the herds and keeping them to a reasonable size. When th those efforts fail, the park rangers take over, hunting down elephants with automatic rifles from the bellies of helicopters. From 1965 to 1995, 50,000 individual elephants were culled in this manner in Zimbabwe. And of course, American executives are always willing to help, like the CEO of GoDaddy.com can rent a car, drive up the elephant, shoot him, and have his picture taken for a mere $60,000. The question we're going to ask today has no right or wrong answer. Are elephants better off in a wildlife preserve where they have inadequate supplies to eat and face starvation and cold-blooded murder despite their freedom? Or are they better off held in captivity, denied the ability to roam or interface with other herds and animals, and yet be cared for until they are a ripe old age? I'll warn you before we go any further, there are no pure choices. But there are good reasons to consider the, uh, these wondrous creatures, the elephants. They have the largest cerebral cortex of any land mammal on the planet. The limbic structure in their brain is exactly identical to the limbic structure in the human brain. And what that means is that emotionally, they are more like us than even chimpanzees and the other primates. They have an extraordinary emotional intelligence. They have self-knowledge. They have an incredible memory and awareness of past and future events. If an elephant spouse dies for a matter for a period of years, the elephant's mate will visit the spot where the spouse fell and carving a, literally carving a trail through the jungle to stay reunited with its uh, former spouse. Elephants live in a matriarchal society. All the, all the calves are mothered by the cows. Any, any calf elephant can nurse off of any mother that's available. When a baby elephant is born, 35% of its brain is formed. This is comparable to humans who have only 26% of their brain formed at birth. What is the same in both species is that these animals require a long period of directed intensive parenting during their formative years. They have remarkable qualities in terms of facial recognition. 
And they live in herds that are both fusionable and fissionable. They live in herds as a family, but elephants can leave that herd and join with another herd, sometimes for years, come back to their original herd and instantly be recognized. They also form incredible bonds with human beings. In Swaziland, when the elephants are needed to be housed for a period of time, keepers always sleep in the stalls with elephants, but never can a keeper sleep for two nights with one elephant because the bond that forms makes that elephant unmanageable in the rest of the herd. So I'd like to refine our question down to one important one, and it's regarding zoos. Is keeping an elephant in captivity on a zoo, despite being well-fed and cared for, is that an effort to preserve a species and be humane to the animal? Or is that merely exploiting the animal for human profit and entertainment? This question was very important in the hold of that 747 that night to Mark Riley. Mark Riley, 20 years ago, was the founder of the Makaya Reserve. His intention at that time was to provide an alternative to having animals put into captivity and kept in zoos in foreign countries. Over the 20 years, he changed his thinking. He looked at the hierarchy of nature and, and has now come to the conclusion that survival is at the top of that pyramid and, and eclipses any other form of ideology. At least, these animals will survive are the words he spoke that night in the 747. The last number of months I've done a lot of reading on this subject and a study of uh, elephants and I've really become impassioned about the wondrous qualities in this wildlife. I really recommend the book, uh, uh, Zoo Story by Thomas French. It's incredible reading both locally for local flavor and for the zoology of it. And I've come to a point in my thinking where I really appreciate the value of zoos, not only for the wildlife that are contained in them, but for the humans as well. Although the zoo might not be the ideal environment, they're well fed, well cared for, and they offer us a value and the opportunity to look into their eyes, to make a bond, and maybe, hopefully, connect somehow with the natural world that we seem to be leaving so far behind us in the 21st century.